Hey there, welcome back to SimTech channel. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Dixal and Power Factories features when running a short circuit analysis. And we're also going to discuss the benefits of running a short circuit analysis on your power system network. In power system, there are many type of short circuit that can arise on a network. Now, the most common ones are the line to ground fault. This type of fault accounts for 70 to 80 percent of most fault occurring on the power system network. Then we also have the line to line fault, which basically your two phases shorting together, and the double line to ground fault. Now, one of the least occurring fault but most devastating is the three phase symmetrical fault where you basically have all your three phase shorting together. The occurrences for this fault is about 5% of most of the fault occurring on your power system network. This type of fault occur for various reasons such as insulation failures, physical damage to conductors, lightning strikes on your transmission lines or on your substations or equipment malfunction. So this is why proper protections and fault clearing mechanisms are essential to minimize the impact of the damage. Hence, knowing the short circuit level on every section of your network will ensure that you size your protection equipment accordingly. To complete a short circuit analysis on Dig Silent here, you need to ensure that all your short circuit parameters, short circuit impedances for all these components they basically set accordingly so if you go on a component like a generator and you go on a type of the generator then you can check under the short circuit here you should see that the sub transient reactants have a value here on the negative sequence and the zero sequence all the parameters are in place you can also check on the transformers transformer type and here you should ensure that the short circuit percentage on the positive sequence and zero sequence are set accordingly you can also check on your transmission line double click on the line and you go on the line type and here you should obviously ensure that your ac resistance and reactances are all in place and as well as the maximum temperature that your line will be running on now these parameters they are very crucial because under short circuit fault conditions your short circuit current and short circuit mva level is going to be dependent of these parameters great now to run a short circuit analysis for your system simply click on this icon here and you're going to see this pop-up window here and here we already have some defined standard international standard that short circuit analysis should be based on now once you select any of these standard it's already going to populate all the required settings that will go according to your parameters that you set on your network right now the iec 16 standards that's the most commonly used standard for short circuit calculations and once you select your standard there are obviously a few other parameters that you need to specify one of which is the fault type right like we've discussed earlier all the type of fault you can get on the power system network right you've got your single phase to ground your one phase your phase two phase and all of these type of fault now we normally select the three phase short circuit because this is the most devastating fault on the power system network so if you want to spec your component you rather spec them for a three phase short circuit fault and you've got the option to calculate either the maximum short circuit fault or the minimum short circuit fault but obviously you would want to know the maximum short circuit fault first and here the short circuit duration now this is an important parameter because here you can specify basically the breakdown now this is dependent on the circuit breaker that you select but your analysis need to know exactly how long will the short circuit take before it is cleared before the circuit breaker trap right so this is where you're going to specify it okay and then when you select your circuit breaker obviously you need to take account of the crucial parameters for that circuit breaker and these parameters are your breaking current obviously and how long will your circuit breaker withstand while under short circuit current and also the maximum or the peak short circuit that that circuit breaker can withstand so you need to know uh, these parameters before you can select a circuit breaker and include it 
onto your network now once you satisfy with the settings here you can now go ahead and execute but before you do that you need to select the location at which you want to run your short circuit analysis now the location is by default it's set at user selection so you have to either select a bus bar and junction node or all the bus bars or you can choose a specific location on your network here so let's first select a specific location on our network right so we need to go on network model and network data here grid then we can either choose what we want to basically uh, at which location we want to run a short circuit analysis let's select line five to seven and click ok and automatically you're going to see the data get populated here for that particular line now that line length here is one kilometer right so we want a fault at 10 percent of basically 10 percent of the land so that will basically be at 0 0.1 kilometer or 100 meters so if you want to change a percentage you can set it to 50 percent here and then you can go ahead and execute right so we're going to see the fault pop up at that line so there we go so this is line 57 that we selected and we have a fault at 50 percent of the line and we can obviously look at this data here as you can see for that three phase symmetrical fault at 50 percent we got uh s kss that's 946.1 mva and 2.3 kilo amps of ikss and ip of 5.8 uh, kilo m so this is basically how you can run a short circuit uh, briefly and by the way if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you subscribe to simtech channel and give this tutorial a thumbs up that will be highly appreciated now we're moving forward here with more on short circuit analysis using dick silent power factory now i'm going to go ahead and change my fault location to all bus bars and execute great now here we can see the short circuit level on all the bus bar that we've selected to run the short circuit analysis now let's zoom in on bus bar 5 here okay and i'm going to go ahead and increase the font here so that we can see what we've got here and i'm going to add more information here okay so let's go on edit and here we can see that we've got the SKSS, so that basically the initial short circuit power, the MVA. Then we've got to add IP, right? That's the peak short circuit current on that section. And IB, which is the breaking short circuit current. So this basically will determine the type of circuit breaker you're going to select for your network. And we also need to know the initial short circuit current. Now, this is important on how your protection equipment are going to react when the short circuit current rises very fast before it can, it can actually settle. Great. Now, let's go ahead and add the names as well so that we can see clearly which short circuit we are looking at here. So, let's just show the names as well. There we go and i'm going to just increase the width here uh, by three there we go right now we can see that the initial short circuit mva for this pass by here is 937 megavolt ampere and the peak short circuit current is 5.8 right so and the breaking the breaking is 2.4 kilo m so if you need a circuit breaker to basically protect this section here you need to ensure that it should be able to break a current of 2.4 kilo amps and that circuit breaker should also be able to handle a peak current of 5.8 kilo amps so this is basically the type of information you can get uh, from running this analysis and you can get this from all the bus bar that we just ran the analysis here you're going to see these informations right so the values are not all going to be the same because each section of the network have different parameters 
and is running on different realities, right? So the result of your short circuit analysis will give you three uh, key parameters here, your peak, breaking, and your initial short circuit current. Those will determine your circuit breaker. The initial short circuit current is important to basically determine how will your component, the circuit breaker that you're going to select or other equipment are going to react when the current rises so quick in a short space of time. Right, so that's important to know how the component will react to that. And the uh, peak current here, obviously, for a circuit breaker, there is a breaking capacity. The current in which, if it's exceed, the circuit breaker will basically explode. Right, so which means in this case here, you should not put a circuit breaker that cannot handle a peak current of 5.8 kilo amps. Otherwise, you're just going to be causing fire onto the network right and your breaking current is obviously the ideal current that the short circuit breaker was designed to break so these are the tricky parameters that you need to know and running this analysis on your network give you this answer now let's go ahead and try to change the type of fault here right so we're going to leave it at all bus bar now we're just going to change it to a single phase to ground fault and we're going to execute again and after execution here we can see that we only getting a fault on one phase let's say phase a in this case and we're getting a current of 2.67 kilo amps of current right but obviously if you are on a power system network you've got a three phase system you're going to be installing three phase a circuit breaker or three single phase circuit breakers but you have to ensure that they are there to the ratings to the current that will be flowing in case of a short circuit let's go ahead and execute one more calculation on line eight to nine here and we're going to execute a short circuit fault here and we're going to execute it at 20 percent of one kilometer here right and we should be able to see that the fault there at 20 percent of the line we're getting a peak current of 7.3 uh, kilo amps and the initial short circuit current we're getting of 2.8 kilo amps right and if you go obviously we're going from uh, 8 to 9 right because this is bus bar 8 and this is bus bar 9 so that's where the line is going so if you going to change the short circuit calculation obviously uh, way all the way to the end of the line so let's say we get at 90 percent of the line then obviously we will be right there and the fault current there will be at 3.1 initial short circuit current and the peak will be at 7.9 so that basically how you can determine uh, your fault at different location of your network because remember this is a line and you might install a substation in between this line here and that substation will be taking care of a particular location that you want to supply power to and you need to know the fault current at different sections at that particular transmission line and once you are satisfied with your analysis you want to generate a report obviously let's go ahead and set it back to all bus bar execute and we're going to go to the output here calculation then we're going to basically just say fault locations with feeders right and we're just gonna execute that so and once that's executed you can then go ahead and just expand this bar here and you should be able to see all the short circuit current on different level the peak the breaking current the mva level and every single parameter that you basically want to know on your network it will be generated here and you should be able to print this uh, as a report for your analysis so that is it guys for this tutorial i hope you find it useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel for more tutorial of this nature until next time cheers